Hello and welcome. Today we're doing another question from Lee Code called Evaluate Reverse Polish Notation. It's a medium. Let's get started. Evaluate the value of an arithmetic expression in reverse Polish notation. Valid operators are the plus, minus, times, and divide. Each operand may be an integer or another expression. Note that division between two integers should truncate towards zero. It is guaranteed that the given RPN expression is always valid. That means the expression would always evaluate to result and there will not be any division by zero operation. So before we get into it, what is reverse Polish notation? If we click this link, we're led to a wiki page that sort of describes it. Feel free to read it on your own, but it's pretty simple. All it is is changing the order of the character. So instead of saying three plus four, we're now saying three, four plus. We're just moving our um, addition times divide or minus sign to the very end. And it should still evaluate to seven. So going back here, looking at example one, we have two one plus three times. How would we evaluate this? We have two one plus, so doing this first, we would get three, and then we would be left with three three times. Moving that times back in the middle, we'll get three times three to give us nine. And addition and multiplication are both commutative. So with this same example, we can instead say we want to do three times one plus two. How would we get this into RPN and then back again? Just to make sure we fully understand what's happening here. So this should also come out tonight. Well, how do we write this in RPN, right? Well, here it says each operand may be an integer or another expression. So let's say one plus two is an expression. So we'll have three times X. How do we write this in RPN? We would write this as 3x times. And what is x, right? So x is equal to 1 plus 2. In RPN, this becomes 1, 2 plus. So substituting this back in for x, we'll have 1, 2 plus. Our final RPN would be 3, 1, 2 plus times. How would we go ahead and compute this? We want to do the exact opposite of what we just did. So we want to evaluate inside out since we just subbed inside the x, right? So as soon as we see our first operator, we're going to apply the two most recent integers and perform that operation. So here, we're gonna get three, one, two plus. So we wanna do one plus two and we'll get three. So now we're left with three, three times and doing three times three, we would get nine. And let's go to example two. We have four, 13, five, divide plus. This is the first operator we see. So we'll do 13 divided by five. That'll give us 2.6, but we do want to truncate towards zero. So I just cut that off to two. So we have four, two, and then plus. So four plus two would give us six. And the very last example here, I'll just go ahead and write this so we can fully flip on it. What I'm going to do is sort of maintain a list and append to it every integer that I see. That way, anytime I see an operator, I'm going to take the two most recent integers, perform that operation, whatever integer is um, out as a result from that is going to go back into my list to be continued on from there. So what does that mean? I start at the first index and I add 10 to my list. I move it up and I do six, then nine, three, and I stop at the plus. Once I see an operator, I'm going to remove the last two numbers and apply that operator. So nine plus, so this becomes nine, three plus, which we translate to nine plus three and get 12, which I append back to the list. So now we have 10, six, 12. Moving this down, I have negative 11. And now I have a times. So I'm going to apply this to the two most recent numbers. 12 times negative 11, we get negative 132. And now we have a divide. So 6 divided by negative 132 
truncated to zero is just zero. Now we have 10, zero that we want to multiply together, which it gives us zero. And a new integer, which I can go ahead and append it to the list. I have a plus, which means we want to add these two together, giving us 17. I'm adding five to my list. And finally, adding these two numbers to get 22, which is the expected value here. You can sort of break this down with the parentheses, but we just did that by evaluating whatever operator we saw first and using that for the two most recent numbers. So all this problem is, is essentially fully understanding what reverse Polish notation is and how to translate to and from it. Now that we've run through a few examples, we can go ahead and code this up. First thing I'm going to do to code this up is have a set of my valid operators. So operators is going to be plus, minus, times, or divide. And these are sort of in string form because that's our input. Every character is a string. Now that I have my operators, I want my empty list. So stack is going to be empty to begin with. And we iterate through input tokens. So for character in tokens, if the character is not in operators, that means it's an integer and we can append it to stack. So stack.append integer of character. Because again, these are strings. We want this to be an integer so we can actually perform the operation on it. However, if it is an operator, so else it is one of these, then we want to pop off our two most recent numbers. So number two is going to be stack.pop, the, like, like the last number that we've added. And num1 is going to be the second to last number we add. So we do stack.pop one more time. And now we have the two numbers stored in num1 and num2. So if the character is a plus, then we append to stack the value of that operation, number one plus number two. So append num1 plus num2. Elif character is a times, we append it to stack. Num1 times num2. Elif character is a minus, then we append num1 minus num2 and for the minus and divide is where this num1 num2 is important to have straight which is why the most recent goes in number two and second to most recent goes number one so we can do number one minus number two instead of number two minus number one and finally we would do stack dot append number one divided by number two and we did want the division to truncate towards zero. So I'm actually going to wrap this with integer. That way, if we have a number like 2.6, we'll cut it off and just say two. At the very end, all we want to do is return the only number in the stack. So stack of negative one. And here we could also use zero. It doesn't matter. All the expressions always are valid. So we'll only have one number remaining. Let's go ahead and run this code. It is accepted and submit. And accepted as well. So super quickly, let's just run through one more example to know how everything is working line by line. Say we have the following input four tokens. We have this here and say we had two and How would we do this? So let's go line by line. First, we have our operators defined up here. Now we have stack initialized to empty. We're going to be looping through every single character in tokens. So character is going to start at index zero. If the character is not an operator, we append to stack the integer version of that character. So here, this is not an operator, and we append this to stack in number form. We don't go into this else block and we go back into this for loop. So now this is our new character. We do the same thing here. We append it to stack and we move on. Here we don't go in this if, in this if statement, we go into the else and we actually pop off our most recent numbers. So here we have num2 equaling one 
and num1 equaling 2. We see that the character we are on is a plus, so we go into here and append to stack number 1 plus number 2. So that would give us 3. And now we are out of this if else block, back into the for loop. Move character here, it is 3, and we do the same thing, we append it to our stack. Moving down, we see that we have something that is in operators. We skip this if, go into the else, and again, pop off number two, number one. So we pop this one off first, and this goes into number two, so we have three. And we pop this off, put it in number one, which is also three. Since it's a times, we go into this else condition right here, and add to stack these two multiplied together. So this would be nine. Moving this down, we append this to stack. And now we have another operator. But before we can actually perform it, we have to pop off the last two numbers. So number two would be two. And number one would be nine. So we do nine minus two to get seven and add that to stack, which is what we finally return. We turn stack minus one, which is just seven. And this is how to solve evaluate reverse Polish notation. Talking about space and time complexity, for space, we potentially store the entire input token. So that would be in order O of n um, being length of input tokens. And for time, it is a one pass solution. We go through tokens once. So that is also O of n. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Oh, <laughs> no!